How to build a Blackgate Sweet P 5 inch gauge locomotive, part 25. Removing the coupling rods and the return cranks to clean up the parts and then drill out a broken pin and taper ream the holes in the return cranks for the new taper pins which will be fitted later. The wheels and coupling rods on this locomotive are a bit of a mess. I think this is what could be called a Bitzer locomotive, made up from bits and pieces. Some of the parts are new and badly made, and some of the parts are worn as though they've been in service for a while. The first thing to do is to clean up the parts, starting with removing the grease from the axle boxes. Now it's time to remove the coupling rods. The big end brasses are held in place by studs, and normally these are screwed in to the main part of the coupling rod with nuts on the other end. I'm removing the nuts, and hopefully it should all come apart. And indeed it does, this is a good start to the job. I moved my attention to the other end and removed the nuts from there. But unfortunately, once I'd done that, the parts did not separate, so there is something wrong. I very gently tapped the studs with a very small hammer, but this didn't do anything. And I should have left the nuts in place, but these were very light hammer blows, and either way, it didn't work. The parts that I wanted to remove just didn't move at all. I noticed on this coupling rod that there are nuts at the other side as well, so I thought it might be a good idea to remove these. Maybe that's the problem. Hopefully when both of these nuts are gone, the parts should disassemble. And thankfully that was the case. As I removed the nuts, the whole assembly became loose and I was able to withdraw it. Bear in mind though, I'm immediately putting these parts back together in the same order as they came apart. I don't want to get them mixed up, for obvious reasons. These are the return cranks on the rear crank pins that drive the valve gear, and I was a bit worried because it looked like one of them was already pinned to the crank pin. More about this shortly. I'd like to take a look at the construction of the big end brasses. Normally, on these type of engines, you drill a hole in the brasses. The idea of this is to let oil through to the crank pin. The problem is, the studs are in the way, so what you have to do is turn the studs and relieve the centre, making them thinner, which I never did think was a good idea. These coupling rods, like a lot of things on this locomotive, are not very well made. I'm going to modify these using my 4-inch belt sander, just to make them look better. And as you can see, the coupling rods are very dirty as well. This clip shows one of the big end brasses at the other side, and as you can see, the oil hole is in the middle, but it's not big enough. I have a very good idea that I will show you in a future episode for getting lubricating oil to where you need it to be, without messing about weakening studs and other things like that. This coupling rod came off far easier than the one at the other side. To further show what I think is a really bad design, I've stopped the video. As you can see, the oil hole goes nowhere because the first thing the oil is going to meet is the stud. And that means in the place that you can currently see, it needs to have a groove to let the oil through. Even though it's probably shown like this on the drawing, I really do not want to use this method. I'm quite pleased to see that whoever built this stamped the numbers on the brasses so you know which way round they fit. Even without the numbers, it's quite simple to figure out what goes where just by trial and error. The numbers, though, speed up the job, and that is always a good thing. One idea that I've used in the past on axles is to drill a hole in the centre of the crank pin and then drill a cross hole to the outside inner bearing part of the crank pin. You can even make fancy end caps and machine them to look like oil boxes and work like oil boxes. Or you can drill a hole all the way through the retainer end cap and the big end bearing to let oil in that way, but it's quite difficult to get your oil can into the right place, especially at the front where the cylinders are definitely in the way. For now, it's time to look at the return cranks. These are bothering me. They need a really good clean up without thinning them out. They're very roughly made. And this one has a pin in the end, which doesn't go all the way through, it's just broken off. Once again, this leads me to believe that some of these parts have been on a working locomotive for a while. And also, there is some wear on the rear axle boxes. 
This is almost always a problem area because the rear axle is under the firebox end of the locomotive and therefore ash drops onto the bearings, mixes with the oil and makes a really good grinding paste. What I'm about to do is a little bit risky. I'm drilling out the broken stud. I'm aligning this up by eye. If I get it wrong, the drill will come out at the wrong angle. Or in the worst case scenario, the drill could snap off. I took my time with the job and the drill more or less came through in the right place. Both of these holes were the same size. What I'm doing here is reaming them out, tapered, because I'm going to fit a taper pin in here. The return crank is held to the crank pin using a pinch bolt. And once you get the valve setting right, that's the time that you drill a hole all the way through the crank pin to fit a taper pin. So doing this is a good idea because there's a little bit less drilling to do. As both of the holes in the return crank are now different sizes, I will select a drill bit that fits into the larger hole, mark a spot with that, then I will use a drill the same size as the hole at the other end to drill all the way through the crank pin. This is difficult. I would normally drill this by hand because the alternative is to remove the wheels, then drill both of the crank pins in the drilling machine. I prefer something a little more gentle. I'll show how I do it when the time comes to drill the holes. I intend to reprofile the ends of the coupling rods and here I'm tapping them with a hammer to make sure that all the parts are in the right place. After which I tighten the nuts on the studs to hold the entire assembly very rigidly together. It's time now to think about cleaning the coupling rods. They're actually quite badly pitted with rust, so Scotch-Brite is going to take too long. What you need for this job is something a bit more severe. This is 400 grade wet-to-dry sandpaper. And not only does it cut through the rust, it gives the right finish on the coupling rods. I once spent a very entertaining afternoon at a mill engine engine house in a place called Sissett in West Yorkshire, talking to the man who renovated the engine. He explained to me that he used a large piece of bandsaw blade ground to the correct profile to scrape all the rust from the rods. What a job that must have been. The engine was a lot bigger than the engines I work on. And that is it for this episode. Progress has been made slowly but surely. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.